itu karena si Well, uh, I guess that's well, we are to go to the bridge. Little drunk, <laughs> not drunk. <laughs> It's more. Than it. You can you can hold from that table if you want. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh wow. You can see everything. Uh, I'm moving here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, my friends, huh? So to you up there, this is a working, hello. This is a working area, so let's try not to speak that loud. So first of all, let me introduce the people who are working over here. So we have a third office at Virginia. Right. Uh, so, and then, can, can you recognize him? Yeah. Alex. Alex. The Zodiac drivers uh, brought yeah. into, the, to the, to the, to the Okay, mm -hmm. let's the same person who actually drive the, the Zodiacs. Mm -hmm. And later will come the captain, so he was walking, doing some work over there. What do we have here on the bridge? I'm going to point the different uh, places, zones that we have. And then I'm going to go more in detail of each of them. Okay, so at the back we'll have this uh, safety wall, which is going to have a lot of uh, lights, some uh, how do you say markers or so, which is going to be showing uh, the different things that we need to be checking. Let's say uh, the first, uh, the main danger that we may have on board is fire. So we have some panels from the splinters. This one is um, working fire detectors. So the, uh, the fire doors as well, the water tight doors as well. So this is pretty much all that they need to monitor the, the vessel. It's going to be shown on the display as well. Okay, so then we have this area which is the navigation in a nautical chart, paper nautical chart which is quite old school. But it's the official way to navigate in this area. I'm going to explain to you. Over here we have the dashboard, which is quite similar to a car stars, uh, dashboard, this is it? Mm -hmm. so, uh, like, it's actually bigger than a car. Yeah, but it's something similar. This is similar what the they car. do uh, to navigate. And over there we have the communication area. I'm going to start with this, uh, the dashboard, navigation dashboard. So first for us to know it's that they need or we need a lot of backup for everything. So you can see we have radio over here, telephone, well, radio, telephone, radio, telephone as well, telephone, 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 and communication, which actually communication is quite important. Therefore, we had a lot of backups in one and uh, each side of the of the this dashboard. As well, you can uh, you're going to be able to see different ski, uh, screens repeated. Again, backup. Those are independent. For example, this radar is independent as the other one, and uh, that is good as well for the officer not to be running from side to side from the. Uh, from this um, the dashboard. So let's say this one, as you can see, if, we don't have, it does, if that's the case, we don't have any electricity, they can spin the wheel over here and they get communication with the different places of the vessel. So this is magnetic. So if we have a blackout really terrible and they're hungry, they can call the, the kitchen to bring them a sandwich. <laughs> Very important. Really important. <laughs> so you can really, no, 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 it's not communication with, the, with the, the kitchen. But yeah, that's the point for them to communicate without any electricity. So the radar, I'm going to explain a bit later with uh, the nautical chart as well. So that goes in hand all together. This display over here, which is repeated right next to the helmsman, Alex, and uh, this is the eco sounder, which will be measuring the depth of the area that we're navigating. So right now it's uh, 52, 53 meters, which is roughly 150 feet, okay? Here, the big, all this area that we navigate is really uneven. It can jump from 11 uh, meters, which is 33 feet. Uh, that's the, the, the pass to the glacier to 600, which is 1,800 feet, more or less, okay? So what do we, what is, this? What, what does the house management do in here. So if you can get uh, closer, so this uh, if you wonder what do they do? Um, Alex looks like and everyone thinks actually that the the helmsman is always quite heroically watching outside looking for icebergs, uh, whales or so sort of things. 
and but he actually does not need to walk to walk to look outside they have to be looking this number or our course so the the officer just said three three five that means he has to follow this direction what does it mean three three five the degrees of the um, exactly the degrees so we have here the, a repeater of our uh, direction so in a hundred and 360 degrees um, circle a compass will have 360 or zero meaning um, which means north 180 south uh, 90 east to 70 west so in this case we're almost going to north so to uh, Isla Navarino, well, over there is Isla Navarino in our navigation to Ulaya. So we are going to have different backups over there, over there, over here as well. We will have going to our GPS positionings um, numbers as well. And over here we have a really interesting device, which is the anemometer, which will be measuring the wind speed in knots. Right now we have 20 knots, which is quite normal, it's uh, regular. Uh, one knot is, please do not ask me in miles, <laughs> uh, it's 1.8 kilometer, uh, kilometer, one knot. So it's uh, roughly 40 kilometers of the, the wind speed and the highest uh, 29 um, knots in the last few hours. So what happens if the helm, the steering wheel fails? We have backup. And is it over here? We have this small joystick, which is the, the, yeah, the size of my pinky and they can actually maneuver the, the ship with this one. And for procedure, they have to try it uh, every week. So try it once to be always um, realizing if it's working or not. And then if we don't have any electricity as well, we have these old fashioned uh, helms, helms from, yeah, from like the movies. This is not just for the pictures, not for a wooden leg captain. It's actually work in the case uh, wouldn't have any electricity. Uh, saying so, it will be require ma many more turns in order to, uh, to th well, spin to turn one degree. Uh, what else? I like your shoes. Oh, I have them too. Oh, so, yeah. And then over there we have this electronic nautical chart, which, as you can see, that island over there looks quite like a like a square, like a geometric weird form. And of course, it's not the same shape. That means this is not 100% precise, therefore we need those nautical charts on paper. This is not official methods of navigation. It's going to be a backup, a, um, a, a way to, yeah, it's a help for them to be tracking our position. But with the help of this, this, the radar, and uh, the nautical chart, they're going to know where we are and updating our position. Behind of us, a communication panel. We, we have long and short frequency radios and satellite communication as well, the big one over there. And continue with my question, what happens if we don't have any electricity? What can we do? Nothing. Smoke signals. Horns. 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 We have this one, the flags. So this one will be, some of, you can get closer. We can come actually over here. So. We have the different flagging system. Which this one is a W. What does W, w mean? The whiskey. What does whiskey mean? Drink. Muy bien. Oh, no. Problems at the bar? Yeah. Drunk person on board? <laughs> Maybe we had one the last trip. No, but this actually means that it's a medical emergency, that we need oh. uh, one medic on board or so. This one, as you may think, this, and this is, for example, when we have uh, divers here on uh, board, scientists, and they want to go and measure the different places. We have to hang this one on top, which will be showing that we have divers uh, in our surroundings for the other vessels to be careful and not to... Yeah. You get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, actually, there's no many ships, as you can see, that are in this area, but uh, if, for example, we need to repair something or paint something up there, uh, we have to set this flag on top of the vessel. And it's going to be much more efficient instead of calling, we have a, a, by radio, uh, instead of Australia, instead of Australia, this, we have a, uh, a diver over here to every ship. You hang this one on, over there on the top, and everyone will know if they know which they should 
uh, know this international coding uh, from the flags. So other ones, we have a flag for men, um, not men, person or board, for example, mm -hmm. for all the other persons to be careful if someone falls. Mm -hmm. Again, when we have much more um, vessels in our surroundings. And at last, over here, my favorite part of the bridge <coughs> is this nautical chart area. So, how does this work? How do we you can how can we make this piece of paper useful? With a lot of skill. Mm -hmm. Our officer, really skilled, Cierto? Mm -hmm. She will actually, they will, the officer and the captain, they will be uh, using this to set our position. How does this work? Of course, we have uh, the sides, the degrees, the length, and the latitude. Mm -hmm. So, with uh, 55 uh, degrees south and 50 minutes or so, it's going to be shown everything over here. Those are the minutes. And these are the degrees, uh, 60, 56 with x minutes or so. So as well, that information is going to be a uh, projected over there in the jeep and the radar, and it's going to be helpful for us to know <laughs> That's with the different tools that we are somewhere around over here. But with the help of the radar and of course watching outside, we're going to be able to set our distance with shore. And I can tell you that we are now somewhere around here, those islands, not here, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are about somewhere around here. We have that small islet over there. I can see that on the, on the nautical chart, sorry, at the, on the uh, radar. So, and the last positioning that we have actually is over here, 1140. Now it's 1143, we are somewhere around here. They are going to be, of course, uh, using, not guessing. We have proper ways to set our positioning with the radars of, uh, and so. And they are going to be updating our position, as you can see, 20 minutes. Four in the morning, we were di this direction, mm -hmm. south for, uh, for 20, for 40, and five or so. So this is the way that yeah. they are going to be using it. We have 27 different navigable charts. Everyone, every chart is going to be actually drawn with this uh, curse, and it will say this direction has to be 150 and the other way around 330. Mm -hmm. And of course, they have to be correcting it because this is going to be the bow direction of the vessel. But what happens if we have wind and swell? We're going to be like this. Mm -hmm. So they will be have always to be correcting our uh, bow in order to follow one curse. It's not as simple as. Okay, go always this number. If we have this number, we're going to have wind from this direction, we're going to lose this. Mm -hmm. Get lost. Like Shackleton, they okay. tried to advance, but they receded 50, uh, 40 miles or so. It's because they need to be correcting all of that. All this information at the end of the ship from the officer has to be written over mm -hmm. here and transpose this uh, information in 15 more minutes when the second officer will come over here. Do you have any questions? Do you change this every day? This is a new map we, every day? No. As no, you can see, the officers are not that messy to have like this in one use. Right. No, we use them as, uh, until they cannot, they no longer used or get, uh, how do you say, not updated. We need to update yeah, them as updated, well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So like you erase these marks? No. Yeah, yeah, those marks, yes. But the truck, usually it's the same. But we would, they would, sh 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 erase the tracks mm -hmm. but it's going to be always the same but the section the zoom area from the cape horn which is the one is going to be auctioned at the end of the trip is going to be a new one every trip, every trip. Uh, yes oh, okay. of course okay. 27 okay. different nautical charts used what well, you see this one 14 yes, november, 14 november wow. 2000 wow. last year and actually every month they're going to be sending different updates of course it's not necessary to be updated this one, but the other ones, yes. Every month, we're going to have, it's going to be uh, revised. And well. look at this absolutely beautiful writing. Yes, mm -hmm. I come always to write that. That's my handwriting. That you write? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Sebastian. Sebastian. Yeah, right. Yes. 
están eh, piropeando la letra. Traté de apropiarme que era la mía, pero no me creyeron. ¿Qué película es esa? ¿Qué película es esa? ¿Qué película es esa? Y hasta la última, la más importante área de esta excursión. La copia. Exacto. Durante la noche, no hay ningún piloto. Por eso tienen que estar despertados. La policía de la compañía dice que no hay ningún piloto. Every decision has to be person made here on board. Why? Currents, swell, or so, GPS won't track that. Always uh, two people? At least two. At least two. Officer, helmsman, and something to the captain. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so the captain is not up here now. Nope. He has to be 24 7. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. that, therefore, he leaves, sleeps right next to the bridge, mm -hmm. just in case we have bad weather conditions, anchoring points, coming to the port, uh, maneuvers. If, for, let's say, we will come this area, which is really narrow, he has to be here. So he has to be for the most critical areas, most critical parts of the uh, navigation. How often do they uh, change uh, shifts? How uh -huh. often? The helmsman will change it every two hours. Oh, so okay. we'll have six uh, sailors nice. plus the boats in. Uh, okay. So we'll have two hours, 12, rest, the officers four hours, eight hours rest. So these oh. third officers are going to be always from uh, eight in the morning or from eight to 12, 20 to zero, zero. It's always to be their shifts and so they're going to be changing. How do people get training to do this kind of work? I was going to ask that, that's a good mm -hmm. question. There or us? Everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any idea? I mean, you obviously know something about it. Uh, the the university or the name? Yes. Right. Okay. Right. So uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So there's the mention. I don't know. How se marina? How se dice marina mercante in English? Merchant. Merchant marine. Ah, merchant marine. So there's a. Uh, you can study that in university, or you can come by from the navy as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and they get educated to this. Do you have a merchant marine academy? Yes. 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 It's like a, a regular yeah. school. Yeah. It's like a regular, yeah. Okay. And how often do, how how long do they stay on the boat before they go home? How depends. <laughs> depends on the role. Depends. For example, the the people who, yeah, that depends on the contract. Uh, the right. the officers, mm -hmm. the security personnel. Let's say the the sailors, the the engine, the engineers. So they have different role than us, mm -hmm. uh, which is. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but for example, for me, I have two two weeks and the whole season off. That's all the tri the crew that we have this uh, non permanent contract, seasonal contract. So it's and then you decide where to take that. Hmm. So are you studying to become uh, an officer? No. No. Okay. No. Is that what they are? Schools? <laughs> which actually we are going to be talking this afternoon since we are going to be all together. I'm going to be your guide for this whole, the whole, uh, the four days that we are going to be on board. Mm -hmm. So well, I, I'm going to let you, I'm going to show you what do we study. Okay. <laughs> Great. So Wonderful. Sebastian. Somebody wants you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's time. Yeah. Se Sebastian, the schools, they follow the ship. They, uh... mm, the, well, that was a squad which never followed us, but we have the, the petrels and okay. the albatross that actually they're going yeah. to be chasing the, the currents that we generate. So they're going to be gliding constantly in our surroundings in this area. Okay. Most likely, the petrel. Okay. The, the albatross are going to be gliding somewhere over there. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. Good. That was very interesting. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. So very nicely done. See you later. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, my pressure is the first time I, I give this. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you did a good job for the first time. <laughs>